But first, let's get into it. What a week. Former Senator Joe Lieberman has died at the age of 82 due to complications from a fall. It's sad, but he died doing what he loved, sitting in a Boeing emergency exit row. <laughs> Don't do that. That's not right. Just going to leave space to potentially cut this one. His dream, you'll decide. How about we collectively decide? His dream of a world with no labels remains unfilled. Even in death, they have to put a little label on your toe. <laughs> Speaking of dropping fast, NBC dropped former RNC chair Ronna McDaniel as a political analyst. Nope. Analyst. 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 You know what? No. Fuck it. Leave it in. Analysis. It's like sometimes you want to say economics or like economics. Anyway. She got shit canned four days after she joined the network amid a fierce backlash. More like Ghana McDaniel. <laughs> Speaking of the RNC, the post purge Republican National Committee has begun asking job applicants if they believe the 2020 election was stolen in order to help make sure new hires are sufficiently pro Trump. The original plan, just hiring Duke graduates, was only 90% effective. <laughs> They also tried putting an applicant in a room with one marshmallow and then said if they can avoid killing Mike Pence for 15 minutes, they'll get two marshmallows. <laughs> Meanwhile, a new Bloomberg News Morning Console poll found that President Biden has narrowed or erased Trump's lead in six of seven swing states. <laughs> Democracy is now in the margin of error. Right there, in that error bar. You know? It's cool. According to a new AP poll, Democrats are more likely to say they feel fearful or angry about Trump winning a second term than Republicans report those feelings about Biden getting reelected. To elicit those same feelings of anger and fear in Republicans, pollsters instead showed them a serial commercial with a mixed-race lesbian couple. <laughs> But Trump also inspires stronger positive reactions among Republicans who were found to be more excited about a potential Trump victory than Democrats were about a Biden win. It helps, of course, that Trump's cornered the market on the absolute most insane people you've ever met. <laughs> High highs, low lows. Trump is out there promising to shoot shoplifters and jail or kill his enemies. Biden's promising not to cut Social Security. It's not high octane stuff. It's not supposed to be. Presidents are like high school chemistry experiments. If they're getting people out of their seats, something has gone wrong. Speaking of experiments gone wrong, Donald Trump, the former president and guy who eats a whole row of Oreos and then yells at the person who bought the Oreos and not in like a funny way, like actually mad, <laughs> announced in a video on True Social this week that he's selling God Bless the USA Bibles ahead of Good Friday and Easter in partnership with country singer Lee Greenwood. Religion and Christianity are the biggest things missing from this country. And I truly believe that we need to bring them back and we have to bring them back fast. In his version of the Bible, though, it says Mary is a four at best. <laughs> Trump continued. All Americans need a Bible in their home, and I have many. It's my favorite book. Because you know how books work. The more you like it, the more copies you get. I love this. I love this because it's a bald-faced lie on two levels. He's asking you to believe that his favorite book is the Bible, but he's also asking you to accept the premise that he has a favorite book. It's like, it's like if I said, I got my six-pack abs from free-soloing buildings. The God Bless the USA Bible, which costs $60, includes the Constitution, the Bill of Rights, the Declaration of Independence, and the Pledge of Allegiance, as well as the lyrics to Greenwood's God Bless the USA. It's a cool blend of Christianity and nationalism, combining a tacit assertion of religious superiority with empty worship of patriotic symbols, obviously not for any love or embrace of the underlying precepts or values contained in either Christian teachings or America's founding documents, but more to claim both in the name of an exploitative worldview, one in which the Bible and the Constitution belongs exclusively to them. You might call it a kind of Christian nationalism, if you can name it, which I just did. <laughs> Speaking of nascent Christian theocracy, on Tuesday, the Supreme Court heard arguments on a challenge to the abortion pill Mifepristone, with a majority of justices seeming inclined to reject that challenge and keep the pill available. 
Things could be worse. Things could be worse. Things could be worse. Yeah, you fucking gave me nothing. The, <laughs> the plaintiffs argued that they face moral harm from the FDA loosening restrictions on mifepristone because patients who take the pills might then show up at the hospitals where they work requiring follow-up care. So even in the strongest version of this argument, it's not that they might be forced to give a patient an abortion against their own beliefs. It's that they might be forced to help keep them from dying in the rare case something's going wrong. You know, like in the Bible where Jesus says, ew, 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 <laughs> lepers. <laughs> no, thank you. Yuck. <laughs> no. <laughs> you brought this on yourself. One problem with even this ridiculous argument, several of the doctors in question are dentists. And if a dentist is dealing with abortion complications, there are bigger problems at that hospital. <laughs> And as the lawyer for the government argued, abortion pills are so safe that it's very rare for any doctor to have to treat patients for serious complications. Just a completely made up problem. Bring a case this stupid to the Supreme Court should be like calling in a fake emergency to 911. There should be criminal penalties, maybe not jail time, but something like having your eyebrows shaved off. <laughs> But right-wing fever dreams were not contained to the Supreme Court this week. Conspiracy theorists wasted no time spreading misinformation about the deadly collapse of Baltimore's Francis Scott Key Bridge, which was struck by a huge container ship early on Tuesday morning. Let me just quickly correct a few things you may have seen online. The captain of the vessel was not Hunter Biden. The bridge had not received an mRNA vaccine. The container ship is not trans. <laughs> While the collision is under investigation, law enforcement officials said they had so far seen absolutely no indication that this was done on purpose. Nevertheless, indicted influencer Andrew Tate tweeted that the ship had been cyber attacked in a post that has been viewed millions of times. Far-right conspiracy theorist Alex Jones amplified Tate's post, writing, Looks deliberate to me. A cyber attack is probable. WW3 has already started. Imagine hearing a container ship has hit a bridge and immediately saying, I know what happened here. Maybe just wait for a shred of information and then we'll actually know whether to blame DEI or the Jews. <laughs> On Newsmax, former Trump advisor and guy whose name sounds like a fish hitting the counter, Matt Schlapp, <laughs> blamed, blamed it. <laughs> blamed, <laughs> <laughs> they blame Schlapp. <laughs> blame the disaster on, you guessed it, COVID lockdowns. You look at our critical infrastructure, and I, I'm one of these people that believes we've never fully come out of all the lockdowns and the and the COVID issues. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I'm no expert on what's going on on the seas, but all I would say is is that uh, if you talk to employers in America, they'll tell you that uh, filling slots with employees who aren't drug addled is a very huge problem. Addled. <laughs> Wouldn't it be nice to live in a world where every time something bad happened, you could go on television and say, the reason that bad thing happened is all the stuff we already didn't like. What a life that must be. How nice it must be to wake up in the morning. Because obviously this guy's happy. <laughs> this guy's figured out the key to happiness. He's a very happy person. Based on reports of how he lives his life, he's got it all figured out. A ship hit a bridge because of a COVID lockdown four years ago should be the last thing you say before you're involuntarily checked into the hospital. Over on Fox News, Maria Bartiromo suggested during an interview with Senator Rick Scott that the bridge collapse had some connections to problems at the border. Maersk is out with some comments this morning because uh, the container vessel that collided with the bridge was chartered by Maersk. Um, look, you're on Homeland Security. I want to understand the threats or the potential threats uh, that this country is facing right now, given this wide open border and the fact that we don't know who's in this country. We've got caravans of Danish container ships sneaking across the Rio Grande <laughs> to destroy America's bridges and Biden needs to answer for it. An answer for it, he did. President Biden said on Tuesday that he intended for the federal government to pay for the entire cost of rebuilding the bridge. Well, yeah, it wasn't going to be Baltimore. I keep falling asleep during the wire, but I don't think it ends with the city acquiring bridge collapse, no big deal levels of wealth. 
I know Biden is reassuring people that the government will step in to help, but I feel like Maersk should probably pay for some of it. At the very least, Baltimore and Maersk should exchange insurance information. <laughs> On Monday, Florida Governor Ron DeSantis signed a law that bans minors under 14 years of age from having social media accounts. DeSantis explained that children under 14 are not yet mature enough to balance social media use with the demands of their full-time factory jobs. Said DeSantis, being buried in those devices all day is not the best way to grow up. It's not the best way to get a good education, continued the governor. If kids are absorbed in their phones, how will they get the full benefit of in-person Floridian schooling experiences like AP Noah's Ark and Sexless Ed, which is not a class, but a weird guy named Ed that makes sure the kids are using the right bathrooms. Speaking of bathrooms, climbers on Mount Everest this year will have to start bringing their poop back down the mountain with them in accordance with new rules from local officials. The rules address a poop pollution problem on Everest driven by the rising number of climbers. Last year, Nepal issued a record 478 climbing permits, and that new Taco Bell on the summit sure as shit doesn't help. Each climber will be given two poop bags, each of which can be used six times. What? And as a gesture of goodwill, each climber will also receive two bags of famous Mount Everest double chocolate brownie nuggets. <laughs> to distinguish these bags from the turd bags, they will be in aqua instead of the usual turquoise. <laughs> <laughs> ah, speaking of taking things with you, the British Museum is suing former curator Peter Higgs for allegedly stealing or damaging over 1,800 artifacts from its collection and selling hundreds of them on eBay. A judge ordered Higgs, who ran the museum's Greek and Roman antiquities department before he was fired for stealing all the antiquities, to return any gems and jewelry that are still in his possession, said the curator of the British Museum, but I learned from watching you. A Massachusetts state police robot, described as a robot dog, was shot three times and rendered inoperable during a standoff on Cape Cod and just two days from retirement. <laughs> take this as a reminder that life can change in an instant and don't take your robot dog for granted. Go bring it on a walk to the farmer's market and watch local children recoil in terror. Give it a good hard kick just to see the creepy way it regains its balance. <laughs> Cherish each special day because you just never know when it will kill you in your sleep. After the incident, the robot was given a 21-gun salute and submerged in a bowl of rice. <laughs> and finally, Punxsutawney Phil, the groundhog, has fathered two babies with his groundhog mate, Phyllis, startling their unsuspecting human caretakers. This was more or less inevitable after the little guy emerged from his burrow and predicted six more weeks of raw-dogging Phyllis. Phyllis. <laughs> 